guys, it's Hatch Romano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Today I'm doing my five perfume discoveries and my five perfume disappointments of 2019. I did this in 2017 and totally forgot about it last year. Don't know what to tell you. But anyway, I'm going to get straight into it because there's not much introduction I can do. I'm going to start with a disappointment, which means I will end on a discovery because I want to end on a positive note. So let's get on with it. So the first disappointment of 2019 for me, this is a huge one. It is the brand new fragrance to come from Etat Libre d'Orange and it is called She Was An Anomaly. Shocking. This fragrance, uh, they say, was made by artificial intelligence. I feel like Etat Libre d'Orange have kind of lost their way a little bit. When they first came about, they were seen as one of the edgiest niche brands and either they're creating things to, to appeal to more of a mass market or what I think is their concepts are overtaking the actual perfumes now. It's not good. So this one is very simply, it's a very transparent, molecule-y type perfume. It basically smells of orris root and it smells of sandalwood and it smells of transparent musks. I think fans of Molecule 01, 02, 03, those very minimalistic, veil-like fragrances will really like this one. But when I smelled it, it was just a bit of a nothing. I was excited about this perfume that they put something into a computer and then this artificial intelligence chose the composition and then a perfumer kind of finished the composition off. It's very, very non-nothingness. It's just, what are you? It's, it's barely a fragrance, I don't think. They have produced some cool things. Uh, I think their Experimentum Crucius, which came out this year, was is great, it's, it performs massively, but then this one was just a big flop. So it's the first one on my disappointment list. Iris Musk Sandalwood. Done. So, the first discovery. This is a big one, I love it, I have it. It's a fragrance called Manishtana, and it's by Prasanna, Parfums Prasanna from Thailand. When I smelled this, I, it was an instant love kind of thing. I'm always looking to add new incenses to my collection. And a lot of them go down the kind of church route. But this one's more like a temple incense. It's so rich. It has about a bazillion spices in it. So it's really, really spicy. The main one being nutmeg, which makes it feel very woody. But there's cinnamon, there's cloves, there's allspice. There's, I think, caraway, cumin. Tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff with this amazing dark incense and then underneath all of that you have a gorgeous leather and it's also smoky as well so it's dark, it's opulent, it's spicy, it's mysterious and it's really really strong as well because it's an extra de parfum so this one is one of my favourite discoveries of this year and I will be wearing it a lot this winter as well so that's that one the next disappointment didn't come out this year, not all of these were released this year, it's just things that I've discovered personally, and I think it might be obvious to say, but it is the reformulation of Samsara. It's not a new perfume by any means, of course, but I did do a comparison video about it because it's my favourite perfume in the whole cosmos of the world, of the planets and solar system and Milky Way and stuff. So I did a comparison thing, and the reason it's a disappointment is obviously a reformulation is never going to be as good, but this one I feel is butchered. I said in my video that it's like Samsara fast-forwarded. You get all of the elements of Samsara, but it happens in five minutes and it just dries to a very simple vanilla. All of the richness is gone, all of the exotic swirling sandalwood and jasmine that lingers and just floats when you wear it. It's just not there. And this one pains me really, really big in my little heart. <laughs> so I'm considering actually moving on from Samsara entirely as soon as my vintages run out. Just gonna let it go. So the next discovery, I have smelled this a couple of times before, or I did discover it last year, but it's really this year that I've decided this is going on my want list and this is going in my collection at some point. It's called Rituale and it's by Menda Terosa, an Italian brand. And this is such an elegant, beautiful floral. It's got a lot of narcissus in it, it smells very golden, it's kind of smooth and sweet and it has tons of beeswax as well. The reason I love this one is because it feels like an 80s perfume. 
but without, like an 80s floral it feels like, but without all of the obnoxiousness that a lot of 80s florals had. It's like someone brought an 80s floral from that time, brought it into 20, well, the 20s, the 2000s, and just refined it and smoothed it out, and it's still bold, but it's just not shoulder pad, loud, smoking 20 cigarettes a day kind of perfume. So, Rituale by Mendita Rosa, check it out if you can, it's so beautiful. The next disappointment is Alien Fusion by Terry Mugler. This one is disappointing for so many reasons. More, the most important thing about it is I feel like it's just a money spinner. I thought this was going to be the spicy alien I was waiting for. They, they claimed it was going to be this fiery red spicy alien. They claimed that it had tuberose and orange blossom in it instead of the typical Sambac jasmine that is the thread that ties all of the aliens together. And it just didn't deliver on any level. It just fell apart all day. There's just no. It just wasn't any different or different enough to the original alien, I, I think, to warrant a flanker. So thumbs down for that one. Some people liked it, obviously, but I no alien that's come after the original has been better for me. And this one was just another one. Same as the pink one, Alien Flora Futura. Same. Disappointing. The next one is a perfume by Lush. This is a discovery. When I went to visit the giant Lush store in Liverpool uh, a couple of months ago, I was gifted a free perfume of my choice and I chose this one. It's called Death and Decay. Don't let the uh, name put you off. It's a lovely floral. It's actually very ylang ylang prominent. They wanted it to smell a little bit like funeral flowers, I guess. It smells like uh, lilacs as well. It's very smooth, it's powdery, and it projects miles. It's creamy, uh, and I chose it because it's ylang ylang, and I'm still hunting for that perfect ylang ylang, guys. The hunt never ends. But yeah, Death and Decay by Lush, I really like. I got a 100ml bottle, and I literally sit here and lavish myself with it when I'm playing my computer games. Just sit here in a cloud of ylang and lilac and just funeral elegance. The next disappointment was really, really sucky. <laughs> uh, if any of you guys have watched many of my videos, you know that I love Coromandel by Chanel. It's my favourite Chanel perfume ever. They released uh, a pure parfum version, or a parfum version, in a little 15ml bottle that's £185. Ouch. Well, why not? I was really excited to smell this. The reason it's disappointing for me is They've changed it too much. All of the magic from what is in the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum of Chanel Coromandel, that patchouli woodiness, that chocolatey thing, and the Chanel magic is gone. It's way too focused on amber. It's almost been changed into an amber perfume. So that's really what I smell. It has whispers of Coromandel, obviously, but the amber is far too intense, so it feels like a few or many other amber perfumes or many other orientals in that respect so I didn't like it and I'm glad because it's expensive so I just didn't need to be falling in love with another version of Coromandel that I cannot afford so that's like a yay but it's a disappointment. <laughs> the next discovery I made was completely random it was when I was sifting through my treasure trove of samples and spraying some things I've had for a while. This one was gift given to me, uh, a subscriber of mine, Christopher Sabina, I don't know if you're going to watch this, but you gave me some samples by Diana Vreeland. And while I don't like the name, it's called Devastatingly Chic. I just think the name's a little bit tacky. The perfume is amazing. I've got it on a card here right now, actually. The reason I love this is because it's a carnation, and you don't get carnation too often now. Or should I say the Carnation Accord? Normally it's an Accord, not the real thing. This is a super elegant Carnation with added pepper, and there's rose in here as well. It's clean, it's, it performs really well. I've, when I've worn it from the sample, it just kind of balloons out into this beautiful cloud of something. I don't know, it's lovely. And I just really, really need this. I don't even know where I can buy it. I think I can get it in Harrods here. I don't know where you guys can get it, but Look it up. Devastatingly Chic by Diana Vreeland. Beautiful. So, so nice. This is one I want to lavish myself with. 
And the final disappointment of this video is one of the newest ones to come from Diptyque. I have reviewed it as well. It's their fragrance called Eau de Month or Eau de Monthe. It's the one with the mint in it, all right? Having not read about the fragrance, I was expecting a mint rose, an elegant Diptyque style mint rose. And when I sprayed it, I was disappointed because it was way too masculine. Upon further reading, I discovered that it's a fougere, so it's meant to be. And I kind of liked it a little bit more from that, but it's, I guess it was one of those, I expected that and I got that. I expected more mint and less man. I don't really wear fougeres that much. It's not the sort of style I wear. I like orientals more. I like incenses and stuff like that. I like dark brooding things. And this one, even though it's called Eau de Mint, it didn't really have too much of a mint thing going on. It did sometimes go in and out of focus, but overall it's not something that I would buy. So, disappointment number five. Which leads me on to the final discovery, and it's my favorite one. I've saved it until last. So, one of my favorite discoveries of last year was a fragrance called Signature, and it's by Ruth Marstenbrook. My favorite discovery of this year is another fragrance by Ruth Marstenbrook. English perfume house, independent perfume house, they're going up and up and up in my estimation all of the time. I just got a sample set from them as well, so I will be doing a spotlight on them. This perfume is called Amarosa. Talk about straight to the top of my want list. This is the this is the next fragrance I'll be getting that I'll be purchasing with my own money. Amarosa. This perfume, and this is no detriment to the brand, I hope they don't take offense if they ever see this, but this perfume, the reason I love it so much is because it smells like Pantene conditioner. If any of you guys were around in the 90s, I'm not talking about the new Pantene, I'm talking about the Pantene from the 90s, the conditioner. It had the most amazing smell. So much so that I used to just put it in my hair and leave it in there so I could just smell it as I was walking around. Yeah, I can be crazy when it comes to smells. This perfume features pineapple among many things and on card you can feel the fruitiness but on skin this thing wafts everywhere. I put one spray on my hand when I first got my sample just everywhere I could just kept catching it all the time just from down there you know below me and it's clean, it's soapy, it reminds me of being a teenager, it performs so so well as do all of her fragrances actually the signature one as well I wore to my friend's wedding in April in August sorry and um, I put it on in the morning and it still was there I could still feel it uh, quite significantly at four in the morning the next morning while we were still partying this one's the same super longevity super soapy and just it's, no, it's a nostalgia thing I am so glad I have found it and I cannot wait to get my hands on the bottle Anyway guys, that was my five discoveries and five disappointments of 2019. Let me know what you've discovered this year. Maybe I can try and find some new discoveries. I'm out for my trying to make the world small better, one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.